Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and today we are going to expand your palette. Did you see what I did there, Mont? Oh, I'm really into the expand your palette thing. I know I just freaked you out because I changed the way I intro the show, um, but I want people to understand that when they come into the Thunderdome, um, that we're looking to create a situation where two things happen. And that's really all I give a crap about. Two things. One, you trust your own palate. You don't apologize for liking chicken or Oreos or Dr. Pepper. So you should definitely not apologize if you like White Zinfandel, Riesling, or Pinot Mignor. And two, you try different things. Because just because you found something you like, whether it's the first time you ever had it, like Grenache or Petit Verdot or Brunello, like we're gonna do today, it doesn't mean that you should be drinking that style all the time, and way too many people do that. On the flip side, if you've had your first Dolcetto ever and you didn't like it, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't try it again. But trying new things and trusting yourself is the cornerstone of Wine Library TV. And today we have a very exciting show. Um, we've got two wines uh, from the 2004 vintage uh, Brunello di Montalcino um, and 2004 Brunellos are ripping hot. Wine Spectator rated the Brunello vintage as a whole, not the individual wines, 92 to 97 points. Uh, wine Advocate Robert Parker, Antonio Galani, who does the uh, Italian wines, has rated Tuscany now. So it's a little bit more broad. They don't do Brunello as a whole. 96 points. Galoni did go into the Wine Advocates Forum and say, hold your panties because a lot of people are offering pre-sales on the 04 Brunellos and a lot of buyers are snapping them up because they've got pretty good scores and there's a lot of hype. But we here at Wine Library, the other part of what I do, the retail side, we did not do that because we don't think the price is gonna go up. No reason to offer a pre-sale when that's not the case. And number two, there's not the overwhelming, unbelievable efforts that so many people think, or at least that's what we think. So um, uh, it's gonna be very interesting to try these two for the first time. 04, very hot vintage for a wine region, Brunello, that is extremely hot. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, Brunello, it's widely considered one of the best areas for uh, Italian wine in the world. Sangiovese grape, Sangiovese Grosso, which is the grape that they kind of call it in uh, Brunello. It's about 70 miles southwest of Florence, to give you a, um, a little reference point. The word Brunello uh, translates to a uh, nice dark one. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> uh, so I think that's kind of funny. Nice dark one. Um, so you've got a nice dark one. It's like poop or something. It's a nice dark one. Um, so, uh, and it received its DOCG status in 1980. Reagan came in, Brunello came in. Um, and has really become, over the last 15 years, really one of the signature places for serious Italian red wine drinking. And we'll get into those in a little bit. But first, comments. Um, we uh, last left off on Wednesday, two-day laps. Hi, I mean, Mott, third time in history. I mean, for three years, it's pretty amazing. Couple circumstances, let's get right into it. Mr. Cook says, Gary Vee has said in the past that the opening rounds of the NCAA tourney are the only days he takes off for personal use. I suspect that is why we have had no new shows since Wednesday. Uh, Mr. Cook, that is correct, but normally I'll come in in the morning, tape them out, Panther just fell, um, tape, see? tape them, and then go back and watch the, sh the uh, games. But what happened was um, I, I had South by Southwest, then Thursday I was in Cincinnati and Chicago on business. I was planning on not having a show that Thursday and I was supposed to be back on Friday banging out a show for you guys, but unfortunately I got pretty sick. Didn't sleep much for about a week and uh, got fairly sick, bot. And so that's why I wasn't here on Friday. That obviously led to two-day laps. DC Rob said, good show, but what gives with the 18th? was like Wednesday, another person angry about the fact that we missed two shows. I guess I appreciate that. I'm glad we have passion for what I do, that two days would uh, bother some, and I appreciate it. Thank you, DC Rob and Mr. Cook. Don says, fantastic episode. Good combo with Kevin on there. Seems like a cool guy, he is. Question of the day, like most people, I love coffee, but one or more interesting note, I've been drinking kefir quite a bit recently. The flavored kinds are really good. Peach, strawberry, blueberry, pomegranate. Don, my dad used to always bring me kefir uh, in the 80s. Uh, that was a real special treat, um, so I have a soft spot for that stuff. Good call. Dave A says, I like tech geeks and wine geeks. Mix them more often. Ah, more wines not available locally. Wow. Uh, Dave referencing to Kevin being a tech geek, me being a wine geek. Uh, I don't know about that, Dave. A lot of old school Vaniacs don't like the Web 2.0 guests. Um, and Kitty Safe said, 
Did he say Prager opened a $2,000 bottle of Opus 1 1994? I wonder how it was. Can he say, first of all, it wasn't $2,000? Because there is no $2,000 Opus 1 94. Even a six liter, I don't think, pushes that. I guess close. And I'm sure it was probably okay. One of the better Opus 1s. 91 94 if you're an Opus 1 fan. All right, let's get into it. Very excited uh, uh, about Brunello, uh, 94, uh, 2004, excuse me, Adagiano, one of the real famous producers of Brunello. Uh, this wine rolls in at 43 US dollars, 94 points. Wine Spectator, Mott, these wines go extremely well with classic Parmigiano cheese. Um, these are very sought after wines right now in the market. A lot of collectors jumping on board. You probably wonder why I did that, just to set the tone. Gotta set the tone, baby. Um, Give it a sniffy sniff because that's what we do on the Thunder Show. Very pretty nose right off the bat. I mean, really, it, it sets the tone. Again, I set the tone for the show. Argiano set the tone for me and my palate saying, you know what, Buster? That's what Argiano calls me. Buster, because looking up, because from coming last. Buster, we're bringing heat tonight. And uh, this wine is loaded with strawberry jam flavors on the nose and a little bit of a, a lilac-y kind of play. Uh, big ups to flowers. Been sniffing quite a bit of them the last two weeks. Going to a couple flower shops. Keeping my nose on point. Um, if you want to learn about wine, flowers need to be in rotation. Smell them as often as you can. Um, really pretty strawberry on the nose. I also get a little bit of like a chalky dust component and a shredded dark chocolate, but almost mocha-like, more so than the dark chocolate with the high cacao count. Let's give it a whirl. Good firm tannins on the, on the, on the back end. This wine is very young. My cheeks look like Yoda. Right now, really scrunching up, you know, wrinkly, very dry wine in the back end. I am picking up some of the heat on the back end, um, which is okay, not too bad, 14%. Great rustic, almost like a sun-dried tomato kind of flavor on the back end. Um, very classic tannins, uh, good richness, a little more body than I, I would have expected, and really kind of exciting me to the possibilities of this vintage, uh, given that this is juicier yet not over the top fake. Um, I like that. Um, I like that a lot actually. Let me give it one more shot. This wine is legit. Um, um, really flavorful, packs a big punch, but extremely smooth considering the back end tannins. They're bitter, but on the second glass, after shock value of the tannin structure, this wine comes across even smooth-like. Um, I would probably say this wine needs to last for about 12 to 15 years. And right now, if you want to eat this, you, you want to have it with a big dish. Um, big, you know, meat dish. Um, I, you know, meatballs. I could see, like, real serious meatballs. We said it the other day. I'm getting into meatballs, Mott. Finally had them. You know, just like a dish. Three meatballs. I'm like, who knew? Um, I think this would go extremely well with a, a lot of meat-type dishes. Um, might be a little too big for pastas or fish. Um, Classic style, I like this wine. The strawberry is is undeniable. I get a little tobacco on the back end. Seems like a bit of cigar, almost like the Conan episode. Um, I like this wine. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go 94 points because that gets really ballsy up in here, but I'm gonna tell you right now, this Argiano brings some serious heat. I'm not talking a back end alcohol. I'm gonna go 92 plus on this wine. It's a very good effort, and I've not tasted a lot of 04 Brunellos yet, and this is a very good start for me. I like this wine. I give it a thumbs up. Not bad, Mon. Not bad at all. Campagnolo, uh, 2004 Brunello, 92 points wine spectator. 40 US dollars. Let's see what's going on here, a little rinse. Um, Tasted a lot of wines over the weekend. Drank a great Petite Syrah um, from Peach Canyon, 05. Definitely want to seek that out if you, if you can. Uh, like, it's like 16, 20 bucks out there. I was really taken aback. I'm really getting into Petite Syrah. Just a little fun fact. I figure like I'll conversate a little bit more about my wine world outside of the show mod. You know, always trying to push the boundaries of the Thunder Show. What do you think about that? A little small talk in between wines? Or is that getting off topic too much in your opinion? Yeah. You know what, semi-question a day. You want the little small talk about wines all over the place, or do you want me to keep it on topic? You want me to keep firm, you want me to be a little flabby, but fun. Um, let's give it a sniffy sniff. A little darker, let's make that point right off the busy. Busy meaning right off the bat. 
Let's give it a snippy snip. Here I get much more of a plum play, almost like plums, cut up plums in heavy cream, because I'm getting a little bit of that oak. So you get a, a pot of heavy cream, um, cut up some plums, throw it in there. That's what this smells like. Get a little too much oak on the nose for me, but the plums are coming across very nicely. Let's give it a whirl. like that double spit a um, Little more rustic on this one. Almost get a, like a, a rusty car plate. You know, if you ever had like a, a, a matchbox car back in the day when they made it out of the real components, like metal, um, and it could get a little rusty, you might have licked it a little bit. No? And so this gets a little bit kind of like rusty, metallic play going on, which I kind of like. Sometimes I refer to it as a penny, but it's not copper-like, it's more rust-like. Um, I definitely get really interesting cassis flavors here. This is loaded with true essence of cassis. Uh, I also get a little bacon play in here, and bacon is just downright delicious. I'm gonna do an episode this week, I'm gonna try to pull it off, of bacon wine pairings. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Um, give it one more shot. <laughs> tomorrow when I do like Sauvignon Blanc from you know, New Zealand, everybody's like, what? Um, this almost has like a, an escargot meets like raspberry cassis sauce. Almost like either something, you know, snaily, fungusy about this. Almost like snails and mushrooms with like jam going on here, which is kind of neat. I kind of like that about this wine. I feel like it's a little flabby on the mid palate. It loses me for a second. You know, it's kind of like a great movie that had like 15 minutes of boredom in it. You ever see one of those? As a matter of fact, can anybody give me a good example of that so I can start using it on the show? Is there a movie you've seen that is legit awesome, but there was like 15 minutes of boredom? Like you almost even fell asleep, but then you're like, oh my God, I love that movie. You're like, remember when I fell asleep? That kind of movie. Please leave that in the comments as well. I'm doing a lot of work in the comments today, Mott. Reading them. Um, I expected it went a little high on this as well, but I think this is very good wine as well. That little flabbiness for a second could come back later as it ages, this is a young wine. This one feels more of like a five to seven year window. This feels more like a you know one hour decanting play, whereas the Argiano is probably more of a two, three. This probably does play a little bit better with pork, um, game, um, hen, pigeon, light, you know, chicken type dishes, whereas this needs to be a little bit bigger. Um, but it's still a nice wine. I'm gonna go 90 points on this wine. You know, and to set the tone, and we're gonna revisit 04 Brunello as we start getting them in, because it's a category a lot of people have questions about, because there's a lot of collectors getting into them. This is a very good start. Two wines, both over 90. You know how tough I try to be on the Thunder Show, but I like these wines. I'm a traditional Brunello liker. Um, wouldn't say I'm a lover a little bit more of a liker, um, but these are solid wines, and if you want a little more history about the aging and what have you with Brunello, we've covered that in past episodes, so my, so a little Brunello search and link up prior Brunello episodes for people to have a reference. Um, that's it. Feel cozy? Felt like that was a tight show, Mott. Feel good about that. I mean, let's be honest, that was a good show. Question of the day. I've already given you two, so please leave that. Question of the day. What do you think of when you hear the word I'm in love with right now, legit. You, with a little bit of me, we are changing the wine world. And please leave a comment. I'm really enjoying this influx, reading the comments on the show. Love, love the interaction. Please get a part of our Facebook fan page. Let's, you know, top left corner, where is that? You want me to look it up? I'll look it up for you. Mott, you are the best. You, well, you've missed me, huh? That's the first time Mott actively, this is what he did. He asked for a link it up. Link that up. You, with a little bit of me, we are changing the wine world.